What's up guys and welcome to my series on how to get started in the washer and dryer business. I'm going to be doing weekly videos on how to get started in this business, tricks and tips for how to make more money in it. Please remember to subscribe because I'm going to be putting out videos on this weekly. Hey guys, in this video I'm going to talk about bulletproofing your washers and dryers before you do deliveries or before you just sell to someone if they're going to do their own delivery. Um, the main thing on a washer, I'm going to start off with washers first there's a pressure line that runs i'll show you how this machine right here this pressure switch there's a plastic tube that runs up to it that's pushing air from the bottom of the drum up the tube and telling us when to turn off to stop filling the drum always at least in my opinion on this uh i always take a zip tie and i zip tie both ends of that the end that has the uh, that connects to the bottom of the drum and the end that connects to that pressure switch i'll put a zip tie on both sides uh, when you're delivering, the issue is that you're shaking this machine a good bit, you're going down the road in their truck, you're putting it on a dolly, you're moving to someone's house, and that little line, if it pops off and it's just stuck on there on most machines, there's nothing, there. on some of the newer machines, they are zip tying them on with little special zip ties, but they are doing it now. But on most machines, it's just stuck on there. And when I pull them off to put the zip tie, I always pull them off first and I cut a tiny bit off so it has a new fresh end that will hold a little bit tighter because over time that will be kind of like a little stretched out around that hole and if it starts breathing around that hole it's just as bad it will slowly leak out and the washer will continue to overfill but if it's off of one side or the other the washer will start filling and it will definitely overfill also while i'm there at their house delivering i will zip tie again the drain line going to their main drain for the washer I'll zip tie it usually to a strap tie or whatever is close by. Sometimes there's a little spot you can zip tie it to that's built on the drains. But um, especially newer washers, the holes are very small. It's a lot of pressure and it will launch out of there like a little rocket and it will just spray all over the wall or just land on the floor and fill up the floor with water. So definitely bring zip ties with you when you're doing a delivery. The other thing to check is the drain for the washer itself at their house. Make sure it's not stopped up. It's super common for those uh, p-traps at the end to get filled up with either laundry detergent and it'll dry into the bottom especially if it's a old rent house and someone didn't have a washer for a long time that will dry up and it'll create a little area where the uh, non-liquid detergent will just kind of build up and build up uh, one way to check this obviously is just turn the washer on and run it through a full cycle I always turn a washer on and let it fill up and make sure it stops just to make sure while I'm there, just to preventative, I always turn it on, I put it on a uh, large load, let it fill all the way up. As soon as it hits agitate, I'll stop it and I'll move it, I'll progress it forward to spin. That way it will drain completely while I'm there and I can make sure that line in the back is not just going to fill up with water and overflow in their wall because they're drain for their wall is messed up not my washers working perfectly because they'll still try to blame you for that problem but another way to check this if it's one of the machines that's difficult to progress forward to drain is you can just take a water the water line that you're hooking on the washer itself and put it directly into the drain and just turn it on full blast if it starts making the cartoon character kind of uh noise let that uh blah, 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 like it's about to come out it will actually make that noise. If you start hearing that noise coming up, go ahead and turn the water off. It's definitely stopped up and uh, tell them about it. Uh, I would not work on someone's plumbing at their house. 100% wouldn't do that. I would, If they have a landlord, I would tell them, call their landlord, tell them this line is stopped up. It's gonna overflow as soon as you t turn the washer on. Don't hook up the washer, let them know. That way they'll, if you hook it up, someone might walk in the house not I've heard that message from you. Just tell them you're not allowed to hook it up while the line's messed up. And you don't want someone to walk in and turn it on that didn't hear that message. Um, the next thing I would say would be the dryer. When you're doing a dryer, I always take my power tester with me and I'll check their line at their house, make sure it's getting 110 on one side and 110 on the other side. Uh, this will prevent a quick return. If it's only getting 110 on one side, it will still run. The motor is 110. The heating element will be 220 and the heating element won't come on they'll think there's something wrong with the heating element you'll think the same thing everybody will be confused but if you take a tester real quick you just test the plug real quick at their house see if it's getting 220 make sure the ground is grounded i have been to a house before where i went to check against the ground and one side and one side had 220 and the other side was dead 
I looked underneath their house as a raised foundation and a squirrel or a rat had chewed up the wires and they had landed together. And it was, uh, I'm, I, I'm sure that's a super fire hazard, but like crazy. It was, it, you'll see all kinds of crazy things when you're doing deliveries. You'll see all kinds of crazy setups of how people are powering their washers and dryers. If anything's weird, don't sell to them. Don't deliver them if they're not going to fix the problems. You don't want that, that kind of a problem anyway. You're just going to be going back there a million times fixing burned up heating elements. Uh, while we're still on dryers, the next thing I'll check while I'm doing a liver and dryer after power is I'm going to make sure the line's not stopped up from the back. Because from the machine forward, the machine you're delivering, if you're following my instructions, you've cleaned out every spot in the machine that could have lint and it's blowing well so it's definitely not stopped up anywhere but you want to make sure their line's good so the line running from the back of the dryer out all the way to the outside of the house should be blowing very well you can just look down the line make sure it's clear that way if it's at a house that it's hard to see where the line's going to it's hitting a wall or going underneath the concrete and coming outside uh, i always turn it to air dry on the dryer i'll turn the dryer on that way, if it's if you turn on heat, the dryer, it's like putting your hand over the end. You might pop a thermal fuse really quickly if their line's messed up. But I'll turn on the air dry, I'll walk outside, and I'll feel if it's blowing about the same as it was inside the house. If it's barely blowing by and outside, it's stopped up somewhere. You need to, uh, same thing, let them know, have them fix it, because you don't want to have to come back to do uh, tons and tons of thermal fuse problems. Uh, one of the guys that follows the channel sent me some pictures of a accident that he had with the washer drain line. Uh, same thing I'm talking about now, and I've had the same incident happen when I first started off too, is he didn't tie that drain line on and it slowly worked its way out and dumped on the customer's floor. And luckily it was a kind of older rug and he just had to replace the padding underneath it. So things do happen sometimes doing a little bit of preventative maintenance while you're there is the best way to avoid all these problems. I always, when I get there, if I have a few minutes, I'll turn the washer on, I'll try it out, I'll turn the dryer on, I'll try it out. Don't just throw them in place and not turn them on and run out the door because that's just asking to come back again. When you are not doing a delivery, now you have got to explain to the customer how to do what I just told you. If you're selling them a washer, Explain that the wall could be stopped up to make sure it's not stopped up kind of go over it really quickly and how to check that if you're selling a dryer push hard about that Line that they're going to plug into it being stopped up tell them that a lot of times it's stopped up No matter what's wrong with the dryer if they bring you a trade in tell them oh more than likely 90% of dryers will go out because the exhaust line is stopped up this one I'm selling you will go out too. be sure to check this this and this just run through the entire spill. That way they'll probably check it. It's crazy how often customers will just plug in play and they'll, they won't think anything about it. But if you really preach it to them and let them know that it's gonna waste their time, waste their day, and it's a super dangerous fire hazard, that'll work. Just a little bit of a scare tactic. It's more than likely not gonna be a problem for them. But one time out of 10, it will be a stopped up exhaust line and you'll be glad you don't have to go back out there and just replace a thermal fuse, which does happen. But that's it for this video, guys. If I missed anything, let me know. If you guys have any other good suggestions on how to prevent some of these problems, let me know. There's a lot of guys in here that are already in this business, and I'm sure they have a lot of good advice. Stick them down in the comments below, and we'll all check them out, and uh, just up thumb any that you think are really good, and I'll update this video. All right, guys, we'll see you next time. Hey. Hey guys, I also wanted to touch base on one more thing. I've gotten a lot of questions about whether you should start an LLC, whether you should get liability insurance, should you have this, the customer sign a waiver, should you ever let a customer come pick up without going to their house and doing deliveries. And these are the things that uh, are very good questions, but most of this is stuff that you'll have to take to a lawyer from, because it's different from state to state, especially on like waivers and things for the customers to sign. I did years ago. I remember it wasn't very much money at all. I gave them a general outline of what I was looking for. They drew it up really quickly. But any business has the potential from getting sued. This is just a harsh reality of owning the business and starting the business. 
Uh, liability insurance is not that much money, so look into these kind of things, but don't let this video scare you from getting started in this business. Go out there, make some money, and don't be too afraid of getting sued constantly, especially in the beginning. You could always make a little bit of money, go pay a lawyer, and get things drawn up until you feel comfortable. You can start an LLC if that works in your state. You could get some liability insurance. So there's tons of other options out there. Don't let these kind of things scare you away from getting into a very profitable business. All right, guys, we'll see y'all next time.